everybody, Pastor Randy here. Great to be with you today. Making it simple, welcome. Great to be with you. We continue at five things to watch for. Today we begin the very last part of that, watching our walk. Now, are we talking about our physical steps? Yes. Are we talking about what others perceive? Absolutely. And so we're going to look at that in uh, several lessons here over this week and, and see exactly not only what the scriptures say, but what, what is made clear by the life and ministry of Jesus. Because I want to begin with the challenge that he laid out. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Now, what is the pivotal word there? The most pivotal word in the entirety of Scripture, if. No, that's not some great theological term or some divisive term. That's just true. That's what sets the stage. That's what changes everything, if. Because what he's saying is, if you love me, in other words, if this is real, if this is real, if you have truly committed your life to me, surrendered your life to me, allowed me to be Lord of your life, Savior of your life, then, so as a result of the acceptance of the if, if you do those things, then you'll do what I ask you to do. You'll obey my commands. Well, one might begin to analyze and look through all the listings that are out there of all the things that we're supposed to be doing. And uh, man, I tell you, you know, there are so many <laughs> videos out there. And I know I mention this sometimes, um, and it's not out of critique, but, but it really is unbelievable. The Pharisees hadn't gone anywhere. I'll just leave it at that. They sure do love to tell everybody what to do, and they love to correct everybody. But what we find in the ministry of Christ, that was not what he was doing. Was he corrective when it was necessary? Absolutely. But what he was more intent on was showing a better way. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But what was that? Oh, don't do this and don't do that and, and go over here and don't walk this and don't say that. No, no, not at all. He had Two, he made it very simple. Love God, love one another. Why is that important? Why is the simplicity of that? Making it simple. Why is that important? Because see, friends, until we learn to truly love God, we cannot truly love each other. Because once we understand the enormity of the love that God has for us, then we become more appreciative. We begin to understand and study and understand what does love really mean? It is, it is not, it is not mere affection. It is not, you know, kicking the sand and giving flowers and puppies. No, love is an action. And therefore Jesus said, if you love me, then you will obey what I've asked you to do. You will learn to love God, which will move and grow in your life and allow you to love others, which impacts our walk. We're going to base these lessons out of the scripture from Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. And I'm going to read that to you a couple different ways. All right, number one here, it says this. So then, in other words, as a result, if this is applicable, if this is what is going on in your life, so then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, so if you have accepted him, if you love me, continue to live in him. Another version says, so walk in him. So here's my question as we begin this first lesson of watching our walk. Has there been a change in your life? And here's the other question, part B of that. Does anybody else know it but you? 
Well, I said yes to Jesus. Man, I love Jesus. Okay, that's great. That's wonderful. But does anybody else know it? Does our walk reflect that? He says here, if you have done this, if you have accepted, so then if you have received him, live in him, walk in him. In the book of 1 John, another letter written from 1 John, he says in chapter 2 in verse 6, another beautiful thing here as we look at this, the one who says he remains in him, speaking of Christ, and I love this part, should walk as he walked. What does that require, friends? What does that require? I want you to think about that. So if you say this, then you walk as he walked. We've heard the question that became a popular acronym. Man, down here in the South, it was license plates and rubber ribbons around your wrist, whatever. WWJD. What would Jesus do? Here's the challenge to that. To honestly understand and to honestly know what he did. And what he would do. You've got to know him. This is not a speculation. This is not a guess. This is not a religious answer. Because to be quite frank with you, religious answers are empty. I see it all the time. Again, in all these great... Uh, videos that are out there, all these great theologians that are standing in their big lecterns and pulpits and platforms, and, and they're standing above everybody answering all these questions with, oh, so their great wisdom. Most of the time it's empty. There's nothing. It's just words. John here says, walk as he walked. What is the challenge to that? For all of us, in order to understand the great characters of history, what do we do? We read their story, whether it's a biography or an autobiography. We read accounts. We read things they were involved in. We read how they reacted at different things and how this, we, all those different things are there, right? Wouldn't it make sense if we are to walk as Jesus walked, if we are love him, that we would do as he says? All these different things that we would walk, if we've accepted him, we would walk as he walked, walk him out in our life, live him out. Wouldn't it make sense we need to really truly know who he is? Not just from an acceptance standpoint. Oh, yeah, Jesus in the Bible, you know. Okay, there's a lot of people in the Bible. But do you know him? See, that's where the difference is. See, friends, we don't have to just know about him. We can actually know him. We can come into a personal relationship with Christ. How do I do that, Pastor? Talk to him. Well, he's not here. Yes, he is. He lives within. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm always there with you. Always. But see, friends, it is the lessons that he's left us. It is the, 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 the illustrations that he's left us through the parables and all the different stuff that cause us to be able to have a greater understanding of, wait a minute, this was not just merely a good person or a great philosopher or a cool guy. No, this was God. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What is he talking about? The character and nature of Christ. Here, of, of the Lord, what of, of, of the Father? I mean, again, I, I get I get passionate about this, so I don't I don't want to misspeak because certainly a lot of critics are out there. They want to catch you on every word that you say wrong. So that's never my intention to do that. But Jesus was loving. Jesus was forgiving. Jesus was a teacher. Jesus. And here's the thing, and I'm going to leave on this. I'm going to pick back up on this tomorrow because, because there's a lot in this. Jesus spoke to those who didn't believe. Jesus spoke to those who were not of God. And the religious people chastised him for it. Why? We'll talk about that tomorrow. God bless you, friends. Have a great day.